Yes, we are back with Why in the Morning and it's time for Strength of a Woman. But before that, special thanks to Alex Karanja and uh, Kalami Val for that amazing segment, always starting on Wednesdays on a laughing note. So if you happen to interact with the video, as I always say, that you think might break the views, go viral. Uh, just send it to us on Y254 channel on Twitter, Y254 underscore channel on Instagram, and Y254 on Facebook. And today for Strength of a Woman, uh, this lady right here, after living in China for two years and learning the culture and the language and seeing how much or how many uh, Chinese people were streaming into the country decided she saw an opportunity in this and built a cultural center where Chinese people and Kenyan people can exchange culture. Without much further ado, uh, Faith Moria Karibusana. SNT. All right, your camera is number four. Uh, there's a drill. Always when you come to Y in the morning and you have to talk to Barry, you introduce yourself. I give people a chance to show off, uh, list all their <laughs> credentials. So your camera is number four. Uh, just give it to us. Okay, my mm -hmm. name is Faith Boria. Mm -hmm. I'm the director of Discovery Chinese Cultural Center. Mm -hmm. I am married. Mm -hmm. I have one child. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically... Yeah, I've studied Chinese, mm -hmm. or rather I studied Chinese a long time ago, 2009. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so far I've still been teaching Chinese mm -hmm. and interacting with the Chinese people every day. All right, mm -hmm. so uh, the sh name of the show is Why in the Morning? Yeah. Uh, so maybe you can say good morning to them in Chinese. Just okay. good morning. <laughs> uh. Okay, 早上好. 早上好. Mm, 早上好. <laughs> so it's 早上好 yes. <laughs> to all our viewers. To everyone. Uh, uh, to everyone. So in 2009, I couldn't imagine somebody deciding to study Chinese. What was your drive to get into this particular language that was not so popular in Kenya? Actually, then. I began studying Chinese in 2008. 2008. Before I even so left for China. Uh -huh. Yes, mm -hmm. and... I just had the nudge to mm. study language mm. after I was done with my studies at the university, my undergra uh -huh. undergraduate studies. Uh -huh. And because I had done English uh -huh. and literature, so I thought I needed to add a language. Uh -huh. And then I was on my way to Allianz Fonse uh -huh. to register for French. Mm -hmm. And then a friend stopped me mm -hmm. and asked me, have you thought about Chinese? Then mm -hmm. I'm thinking, I've not even had any school mm -hmm. offering Chinese at mm -hmm. that time. Mm -hmm. So I thought, why Chinese? You mm -hmm. know, why? But then the friend told me, you need to come to my house, we talk. Mm -hmm. And then I went mm -hmm. and she actually started explaining to me what she thinks is the future. Uh -huh. And I thought, okay. Then there was uh, a Jama who had come from China and mm -hmm. he had started teaching at a small college in town. Mm -hmm. So I went and he started me off. And for three months, mm -hmm. I engaged in basic Chinese here in Kenya. Mm -hmm. Then thereafter is when I got a scholarship mm -hmm. with Kenyatta University mm -hmm. to go and learn Chinese now at a deeper level mm -hmm. in China. In China. Yes. Then you came back. Then I came back, yeah. You studied Chinese for two years. Yes, right. round about. Around, all right, so yeah. I'd like to know, I was experienced living in China. <laughs> did, did you experience all these culture shocks that uh, we, we got to hear about? Yes, I did. Uh -huh. I, the one that always strikes me till today. I uh -huh. stayed three months before eating their food. Uh -huh. So I would always go to the supermarket, uh -huh. buy bread and milk. Bread and milk, because at least bread is familiar. Bread uh -huh. is bread, where, uh -huh. wherever you bread are. Bread is bread, whatever. Yeah, so and milk is milk. <laughs> but milk, milk is can <laughs> also be young girl, yeah. But anyway, know, so, but it was milk. so you lived off bread and milk, because you were scared yes. to eat snakes and dogs. Not really. I would just go to the hotel and I would not find anything comfortable apart from rice. Uh -huh. But then I would think, how do I just eat dry rice with, uh -huh. with nothing else? Mm -hmm. So everything else was, was, I would just look at food and think, you be how can I do three this? Months. For Which three Chinese months. Which Chinese meal was the first one you had after these three months? The first meal was jiaozu. Jiaozu are Chinese dumplings. Uh -huh. And I actually didn't like them. Uh -huh. <laughs> so when I tasted and I thought, this is what I'll be eating every day. Uh -huh. I was you taken aback and uh -huh. then I thought, but then anyway, I decided I have more than a year in uh -huh. this country. 
I must start integrating. I must uh -huh. start learning how to eat, uh -huh. you know, because I can't just part of eat the bread. As well. Yeah, it's part of the culture. Uh -huh. And then again, you they know, they don't have bread. maize and beans there. No, they have. Uh -huh. They have <laughs> actually. <laughs> Funny enough, uh -huh. uh, I wouldn't really find beans in the hotel. So uh -huh. if you really want to cook beans or maize, you have to decide to cook. Uh -huh. And for me, I didn't want to cook. Uh -huh. Honestly, I just wanted to go and have my time studying uh -huh. and just having fun no uh -huh. cooking i no didn't want cooking. to engage in such that things. particular moment in time mm. so you ate uh, the chinese dumplings yeah we only see it on um, kung fu panda i've only seen dumplings on kung fu panda <laughs> they're, uh, they're now common uh -huh. if you go to the chinese hotels here in kenya uh -huh. there are so many yeah you can even buy these a small supermarket near yaya uh -huh. they're there they're there. Yeah. So Chinese culture there. is really getting... It's, it's real really in Kenya. ...integrating with ours. It is. All right. It is. After your life in China, did you experience any other thing that you experienced apart from the food? Uh, something that stood out for you? Mm, language. Uh -huh. Language was such How a How many barrier. languages do they speak there? Okay, Chinese, they have 56 ethnic groups. Uh -huh. And <clears throat> though mandarin is the official language mm -hmm. which now we teach huh? uh -huh. but then if you're staying in the village uh -huh. you or your university is in the village uh -huh. you'll encounter these other dialects uh -huh. that sometimes you're saying this in the market uh -huh. and somebody does not seem to understand what exactly mm -hmm. you're saying but they're all uh byproducts for lack of better words mm. but by byproducts of mandarin uh I think it's the other way. Uh -huh. Mandarin is borrowing from all of them. Yes, from all of them, and then coming out as one language. You know, like the way we would say Kiswahili, mm -hmm. bringing us all together. So Mandarin it borrows is from bringing different Bantu exactly. tribes, exactly, and then yes. uh, from the Arabic, and then it mm -hmm. brings, us, brings together. us together. Yeah, so all Mandarin right. is actually intended to bring the whole Chinese community together as right. like one language so when i say i speak chinese is it the right thing to say to, uh, i speak chinese or i speak mandarin i speak mandarin chinese all right it's okay to say that i speak mandarin chinese yes what are other, the other mandarins that exist and no, <laughs> the others are dialects like uh -huh. we have cantonese uh -huh. which is spoken largely in the south of china mm -hmm. uh hong kong and all those parts uh -huh. but you'll find also in those areas south of china and hong kong there are also mm -hmm. if you go there like a mandarin speaker like i i'll still mm -hmm. find myself getting along with them because mm -hmm. they still understand oh, yeah. but there are also other dialects which are based on those other different tribes mm -hmm. yeah and these are things you teach uh, kenyans who are interested in, in going to china Yes. or understanding the Chinese culture. Y yes. All right, let's get back to the history before we get to, to today. Yes. Uh, after you came from China, mm. you went back to Kenyatta University. Yes, that you remember offered you the scholarship. The scholarship. Uh -huh. Yes, so I came back and Kenyatta University offered me a job as mm -hmm. a as a lecturer of Chinese language uh -huh. and culture. So you, English literature... Kando. Kando. <laughs> but still I language. I forgot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but and by the way, I didn't tell you that uh -huh. with English literature, I was under TSC. Uh -huh. I was a high school teacher. All right. Yeah. Uh -huh. So when I came back, everything just had to stop with uh -huh. high school and English. Mm -hmm. And now I got integrated into Kenyatta University community and started uh -huh. teaching. Uh, Chinese. Chinese. All right. So at what point did you figure, okay, and we need a cultural center. We mm. have the cultural centers for for the Germans. Yes. We have the Gotha Institute. We have yeah. cultural centers like the Alliance for mm. say we have the British Council. Mm. Uh, at what point did you see the need for a cultural center that brings together Chinese people and Kenyan people? In 2011, mm -hmm. I came back in 2010, so I had already taught at Kenyatta University for a whole year. Mm -hmm. And then I just realized that there is need for more mm -hmm. uh, because in, in the universities, we have what we call the Confucius Institutes or the Chinese Institutes. Mm -hmm. They integrate all these things. But then with these institutes, they focus on an you know, a certain group of people, mostly mm -hmm. the young ones who come in the university. Mm -hmm. But then what about all these other people? Mm -hmm. People who are not also able to go to the university, people who are not as learned as much. Yet mm -hmm. when the Chinese people come, mm -hmm. they're integrating with the learned and the non-learned. Mm -hmm. You know, they're integrating with the Everybody. people. Uh -huh. kwa, kwa barabara wa kijenga. So uh -huh. what do we do about these other uh -huh. groups? 
And that is when I thought, no, I must focus on this group that mm -hmm. has not been focused upon. Mm -hmm. yes. So you're focusing on each and every person in the society. Exactly. That the Chinese people are going to interact with. Yes. And that would like to interact with the Chinese in terms of business as well. Exactly. What are some of the services offered at the cultural center? At the cultural center. Mm -hmm. We have now grown, but when we were beginning, we were only just offering Chinese language mm -hmm. and culture to the business community. Mm -hmm. And then now we opened up, not just to the business people, but mm -hmm. to every other person. Mm -hmm. So we have courses from children to adults. Mm -hmm. And besides the Chinese language and culture courses, we do translation. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have lots of, you know, with the coming in of Chinese people, mm -hmm. the immigration near your house, mm -hmm. they need documents to be translated. Uh -huh. They are academic documents to English. Uh -huh. So we do translation. We also do interpretation. Mm -hmm. We also do homeschooling. Mm -hmm. Our teachers go to their homes mm -hmm. to teach there. Mm -hmm. And we also coordinate with some schools, like we so far coordinating with two international schools. Mm -hmm where we teach Chinese in their schools. Aye. So we are the ones in charge of the program. Wonderful. So translation is a core business it for is, you guys. It is very core. I think every week we have documents coming in the center from mm -hmm. immigration just to do the, the Chinese to English in translation. All right. So what are mm. some of the documents that you translate? Academic certificates. Academic they are degrees certificates. Uh -huh. and master's certificates. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm. And there are letters as well. And there are letters, but mm -hmm. mostly it's normally the academic certificates. The academic certificates. Yeah, because when they want to get their work permits, mm -hmm. they need their documents to be looked upon. Mm -hmm. And, you know, <laughs> they're in Chinese. Mm -hmm. So we need to transfer them to English to say what exactly is in this document. Wonderful. Mm. You say you, how many teachers do you have right now? Now we have seven teachers. Seven teachers uh, as we speak. Yes. Where did you get them from? <laughs> now, uh, after we came back from China, of course, many other people started learning Chinese. Mm -hmm. And I remember from my university, Kenyatta, mm -hmm. more people were given scholarships after us and mm -hmm. they went to China mm -hmm. and they came back. So that tells you that more people came when they had the knowledge of teaching. Because when you go to China with that program, mm -hmm. you train as a teacher. Mm -hmm. So they came back knowing how to teach. And mm -hmm. that's how I managed to get teachers, you know, oh, from yeah. the lot that is coming back from China. Wonderful. But even others who have not gone to China, mm -hmm. we have Kenyans who are really doing well. They've never been to China, but their language is really good. Mm -hmm. And they've gotten to a higher level where they can teach. Mm -hmm. We also hire them. You also have them. So there yes. are there job opportunities because people always ask. Uh, yes, there, there are especially under chinese uh -huh. language at this moment mm -hmm. honestly there are and i'll tell you why mm -hmm. in 2020 january mm -hmm. the government will be releasing or launching the chinese program in mm -hmm. primary and high schools as a pilot program mm -hmm. so at the moment the curriculum is being prepared and being finalized and everything so you can imagine those people who have studied our at kids a certain are going level. to be learning chinese in oh school. yeah yeah <laughs> Right. you will be shocked. Do, do they have the option of deciding whether to or not? They they do, of course, because uh -huh. there will be other foreign languages. Uh -huh. eh? Yeah, but... Chinese is going to be one Chinese of them. Chinese is one of them. Right. And I would encourage them to do Chinese, to do honestly. Chinese. Yes. Uh, reason being, Chinese is a big market for it's Kenyan products. It's a big market for Kenyan pro products. Mm -hmm. Africa, mm -hmm. China is, is, is something to reckon with. China mm -hmm. has, in a nutshell taken over Africa. Mm -hmm. And we cannot do anything at this moment. They're the ones doing everything. Mm -hmm. Our roads, you know, infrastructure, mm -hmm. every other sector, they're mm -hmm. there. So you see, we say in English, if you can't beat them, join mm -hmm. them. Right. So how and do you might learn way something of, <laughs> Exactly. One right. way of joining uh -huh. is just learning their language learning and their cultures language that you and infil learn them. infiltrating. Yes. All right. Mm. So, uh, on the flip side, do you find Chinese people wanting to learn Swahili and approaching? Yes. Yes, we do. Quite mm -hmm. many. Just that for us, we, we did not want at the beginning to like integrate in everything. Because sometimes in business, if you're doing almost everything, uh -huh. you, you can fail. Uh -huh. 
Uh, but yeah, we have done small trainings mm -hmm. in companies, like we have done in, in companies sometimes, uh, <coughs> companies where we will teach a little Swahili, basic Swahili mm -hmm. or basic English. Because mm -hmm. some of the Chinese who come in don't even know so much English. So mm -hmm. they want English to polish, in, to polish their English mm -hmm. or Swahili. So mm -hmm. yeah, we do. But not in a huge way as we do for Kenyans to Chinese. All right. Yeah. Wonderful. So, uh, where are you guys located? We are located just here, Koinange Street. Koinange Street. Yeah, in a building called Ratansi Educational mm. Trust Building. Ratansi Educational mm. Trust Building, uh, Long Koinange Street. Yes. How can people find you on social media? Oh, uh, through Discovery Chinese, uh -huh. Facebook, huh? Uh -huh. Facebook Discovery Chinese. Uh -huh. Um, and we are also on Instagram, mm -hmm. Discovery Chinese, mm -hmm. but we, we hit a lot on Facebook mm -hmm. and on YouTube, Discovery uh -huh. Chinese Kenya. All right. What type of content is on your YouTube channel? Teaching. Teaching. <laughs> so basic Chinese. Basic Chinese. So yeah, I can so learn you, yeah, Chinese yeah. from your YouTube channel. Yes. Yes, All right, you are can. Are you a tutor in some of the videos? Yes. I'm actually like the... The main tutor. The main tutor. The main tutor there. Yeah. All right. So, uh, okay. Uh, we've talked about the opportunities that P Kenyans can 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 get mm. in learning Chinese, and Kenyans can get in uh, in in China as well. Mm. The big question is always trade, because uh, language opens up trade. Trade. When yes. you guys can understand each other, mm. uh, there's the op there's the possibility of trade occurring. Yes. So. Is it a service you're offering to Kenyans who, uh, who want to probably sell their products to the Chinese market mm. or do business in China? Actually, uh, to be honest with you, mm. some of our evening evening students, evening uh -huh. class students are are students who are already interacting with the Chinese mm -hmm. in terms of either they are doing business with the Chinese or they mm -hmm. are working in Chinese companies mm -hmm. or they are, you know, they are agricultural. Um, uh -huh. in, the, in the agricultural sector, uh -huh. and they like started export, yeah. this business of you know the avocados uh -huh. and all that. Avocados uh, are going to China in are, abundance. Yeah? <laughs> they are, uh -huh. and so when they come, they they tell us what they want. They mm -hmm. just want language for 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 buying and selling. Mm -hmm. So we train them on that. We don't actually engage them in all these other things mm -hmm. we just focus on what the client wants okay. because for them it's only the trade uh, so and there's a package for traders yes you learn is. how to haggle yes uh, you learn how to yes. again exactly you learn how to tell the numbers and everything yes and the language of business and that's it because right. you don't need more than that mm -hmm. there's no need of introducing you to a whole course uh -huh. yet you won't use it uh -huh. so we introduce you to only what you will need all right yes so there's a package for traders there's a package for linguists, people who are passionate about language, yes, what kind of packages exist as well? Mm, we also have packages for people who, who now want to do translation mm -hmm. and interpretation. Mm -hmm. It's quite this is deep, mm -hmm. very deep. So mm -hmm. you have to go all the way up to level four, five, and six. Six mm -hmm. is the highest. Six is the highest level. Yes, mm -hmm. but for business people, level one is enough. Mm -hmm. And even that level one, we will tailor make it. Mm -hmm. If you are a student from high school, you'll do the whole of level one. Uh -huh. But if you are uh, a business person, mm -hmm. we will cut your level one to just what you need. All right. Just what you need. So this thing is, is tailor-made. It's, yeah, it's custom-made. And that's what makes us unique mm -hmm. from all the other places. Uh -huh. Yes, because we, we, we just work with the need of the student. The need the of client. the student. And the students can go from uh, class one to... Level one to six. Level one to six. Yes. But the ages of, the, of your students. Um, what, what is the average age for, of your students? Okay, now since we opened up to everyone, we mm -hmm. have a large group of students who have just cleared high school. Mm -hmm. I think those are 18, 19. Mm -hmm. And then we have the, the stage that they are in, they are working, they are mm -hmm. the working class. They are not very old, they are mm -hmm. 24s to 35s. Mm -hmm. But can you imagine we have 50s? Mm -hmm. People we have, in their 50s. Yes, we have mm -hmm. 50s and the <laughs> the These ones are the ones who are exporting avocados. Actually, yeah. these are the businessmen. These the business are the man. you know uh -huh. the strongholds. They've in seen Kenya. a market of two billion yes. people. <laughs> yes, somewhere. yes, yes, yes. Uh -huh. They might not necessarily. Most of them come to the center. They mm -hmm. might just decide. I'll be in my office. Send me a teacher. Mm -hmm. I'll be in my house on Saturday. Send me a teacher. Because mm -hmm. some of them are really. Uh, can I say high profiled? Mm -hmm. They don't want to come to the center, mm -hmm. but wherever they are, we'll send a teacher to them. All right. Mm. There's uh, culture. I'd like to put you on the spot a bit. There's a there's a 
there's this attitude yeah kenyans I know. Uh, africans have towards chinese yes. people yeah have you interacted with it or have you heard uh one or two things about what kenyans think about chinese people a lot a lot a what lot. are some of the misconceptions <laughs> A lot, and mm. mostly it happens at the workplace. Mm -hmm. um, Chinese are, can I say they are crazy in working, that mm -hmm. they would want to, they can even work at up to 9 o'clock. Mm -hmm. But Kenyans know my time is 8 to 5 p.m. Mm -hmm. That's our culture, our work culture, mm -hmm. even low-wise, isn't mm -hmm. it? So there's always that conflict. Mm -hmm. These Chinese don't understand me. I want to leave for home at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. There's no overtime. Mm -hmm. But a Chinese is thinking, why should they give you overtime? Mm -hmm. You should continue working. I'm also here. You yeah, know, I've yeah, not yeah. also gone home. Uh -huh. So this has actually been the fundamental crash uh -huh. in, in, in the employment uh -huh. places. People don't understand each other. When it comes to the labor. When it comes to labor laws, I uh -huh. think. And uh -huh. probably this is something that would come from the government like to assure your work is eight to five mm -hmm. but <laughs> if you agree with the chinese is to extend so there's that uh -huh. um there's also um the issue of there are some things we we do but the chinese don't do or there are some mm -hmm. things the chinese will do and we don't do mm -hmm. uh, and you find that kenyans can't understand mm -hmm. they don't understand why should you do this mm -hmm. why should you do this for me mm -hmm. yet for us we, we don't do this in mm -hmm. my home and so the kenyans are wondering you you are a foreigner mm -hmm. you've come to my country mm -hmm. you should follow what, what i, I what do, I do yeah, what, what we, we do. do but the chinese on the other hand they, they can't understand. Then they are, they are so entrepreneurial. Uh -huh. That's why you would hear the cases of Gekomba. And uh -huh. a Chinese, They're very aggressive. Yeah, a Chinese can go to the village and fit in. You mm -hmm. know, it's not even like I'm Zungu. Mm -hmm. A Chinese can go to the slum and fit in. So long as his business will succeed. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, the Givari, you know, the, 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 yeah. the, you know but now a Kenyan is wondering why are you coming up to the most down level to uh -huh. take over my business uh -huh. but you see it's it's because of the mindset of the a Chinese past. Uh -huh. yeah it's very different and uh -huh. they think I can offer anything you need uh -huh. As long as it brings me money. <laughs> as long as it brings so me money. So this is where they're going to conflict with the Kenyans. With people. the Kenyans. All right. Yes. And then they can offer it at whatever price. Uh -huh. You can get this phone mm. and the same phone still at, you know, like at 1,000, but the same one want. at 20,000. <laughs> but the quality is going to be different, obviously. Yes. So these are some of the, some of the conflicts, conflicts Kenyans have with the Chinese people. Mm. Have you had any complaints uh, from the Chinese people about Kenyans? Because uh, one time <laughs> yeah. I was in yes. a supermarket. Uh -huh. And one of them gave some type of way. I almost called him out, but I figured maybe it's where it is from. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the things they don't like about Kenyans? Stealing. Stealing, number one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, even as the Chinese sometimes may be awkward, mm -hmm. but also some Kenyans have taken advantage. Mm -hmm. So they steal a lot. And I'll tell you how they steal. The Chinese mostly will, may not keep their money in the bank. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you might see a Chinese carrying uh, a backpack uh -huh. image a pesa uh -huh. now diana walk too because uh -huh. in china it's normal it's okay to walk like that uh -huh. so a, a kenyan knows this chinese has hidden money has it's not even hiding has put his money you know a lot of money down there uh -huh. and then they will steal uh -huh. so it's been very difficult for chinese to find loyal people uh -huh. you know many loyal people who would work for them and uh -huh. even when they approach us to to you know like to give them people who can work with them mm -hmm. they'll say please give me somebody who will not steal you know and it's difficult to even know who will steal and who will not steal eh? so, so Kenya that to my picture, huh? <laughs> so you uh -huh. make a, such a challenge mm -hmm. for the chinese people then some of them complain of laziness mm -hmm. It's and it, uh, for me, can, being a Kenya, I don't think it's laziness. It's just the misunderstanding of. Yes. For me, I want my my work to end at five. Because I have a family. Yeah, I have a family. I have a social life. The, remember, this Chinese probably has left his family in China. Uh -huh. He's been he's come here as an expatriate or something. Uh -huh. He doesn't have a family to go back to. Uh -huh. But me, I'm thinking no. I need to go I have home. Kids. I have, <laughs> the most important thing yeah. is your family. Yes, yeah, sometimes uh -huh. because my husband actually works with a Chinese company. Uh -huh. Sometimes they may say they are going for another meeting uh -huh. at six. So another meeting is beginning at six. 
we are waiting for him and we are wondering. <laughs> wow. And they will go up to 9 p.m. or whatever time. Because it's and they, they expect they it's you to be there tomorrow at the same the time. The same time, yeah, as early as you should be. So these are some of the <laughs> this is all the, the clashes. Yeah. So Kenyans think they they, they are too much. First. Exactly. Uh, Chinese people think uh, Kenyans are lazy. Yeah, Kenyans are. And are this is why lazy. this is why you come in mm. to merge the to cultures, merge the cultures, to, to bring help. integration, exactly. to bring the understanding. Yes. And it starts yes. with language. Yes, it starts with language. Mm -hmm. And even if, because not all of us would want to study a foreign language, not everyone mm -hmm. may have the passion to study Chinese language, mm -hmm. but it's important if you are integrating with the Chinese people, then to at least understand the culture. Mm -hmm. The culture is fundamental. Very it's this very important. This is something important. you can uh, find at Discovery. A Discovery Chinese. Discovery Chinese. Yes. Located along Koinange Street. Koinange Street. Uh, the name of the building again. Ratansi Educational uh -huh. Trust Building. All right. Uh, what yes. about the social media handle? Uh, on Facebook at Discovery Chinese and mm -hmm. on YouTube Discovery Chinese Kenya. All right, thank mm -hmm. you very much for whatever you're doing uh, in terms of integrating mm -hmm. uh, Kenya and China. We need culture. this was overdue, and I, I, I'm <laughs> so glad something somebody recognized the space for this. Mm -hmm. So I'm told uh, today's your birthday. <laughs> Mm. Happy birthday. My goodness, we told you. <laughs> yes, we do our research <laughs> very well. So, okay, a you. day like this when you were born. Yes. And in two weeks' time, <laughs> your junior is going to be coming. Uh, oh you might share with me. Ten mil. <laughs> Ten mil. <laughs> All right. So uh, we'd like to appreciate you a bit My as Y254 <laughs> and Discovery Chinese. Collabo Utachizi. Uh, Discovery Chinese in collaboration with Y254. We'd like mm. to celebrate you a bit. Thank and you. just thank wish you a happy birthday. And thank you for what you're doing. And we have a token for you right there from your people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yes. Give me that is crazy. <laughs> wow. Where ah, is <laughs> we just come around, come around. Oh, God. Welcome. Thank you very much. Nini, so, look at all of you we'll here. sing a happy birthday as we wrap this up in Chinese. <laughs> yes, let's do this. Yes. Alright, uh, since you're familiar with the place, uh, she's been here. We, she, we've worked with her for a while. Uh, you can cut the cake and she'll get the first bite a lot of behind the scenes. <laughs> Alright, as she does that, White54 channel on Twitter, White54 underscore channel on Instagram, and White54 on Facebook is the way to interact with us. Hashtag is Why in the Morning, hashtag is Queen's Wednesday, and hashtag is Strength of a Woman. And our Strength of a Woman uh, of the Day is trying to integrate the Kenyan and the Chinese culture to make a better environment for doing business. She goes by the, uh, the name Faith Moria. I'd like to call her Warrior now, and we'd like to feed her uh, uh, to get a a very huge chunk of cake <laughs> in, a, in a mouth as we wrap this up. Remember, Calumny Val is coming up next with Girls Talk, a uh, hot topic. You don't want to miss it. So once again, yeah. <laughs> Happy birthday, Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. So uh, I think we've come to the end of this. It's time to eat the cake and invite people to share the cake with Faith as she celebrates her birthday. Don't go nowhere, don't touch that tap. <laughs> mm. <laughs>